Hey there, and welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. I hope you're having a great week and that you're staying safe and healthy out in your neck of the woods. Now in today's episode, we're going to walk through the process of how this corner entertainment center was built. It was a fun and a simple weekend project, and I actually built it out of some wood from an old fence that I tore down on the property. It has a drawer in the top unit to help organize remote controls and coasters, and then the top surfaces have plenty of room for speakers and electronics. Now these could easily be modified to different sizes to use as corner floating shelves or for other items in the home. Please give the video a thumbs up if you find it helpful, subscribe to the channel, and click on the notification bell below so you know when the next video comes out. All right, let's go ahead and get started with today's project. Britt and I started by going out to the wood pile to find some reclaimed materials for the project. I'd taken down a fence a while back and harvested a good stock of wood to use for projects around the house. Oh yeah, that's yeah. pretty too. Another short one. There's some nice browns. Yes, I like that one. We scraped off the snow and ice and then moved it into the shop to start drying. The next step was to measure the area and come up with a design that would fit the electronics. We like the clean and simple look of floating shelves, so we drew up a sketch and figured out a game plan. Each of the shelves for this build are 56 inches wide on the front side and then they come out 40 inches next to each wall. You can check out the plans and detailed tutorial at DIYP.com forward slash corner shelves. The wood was cut to size on the miter saw with 45 degree angles on each end and it looked like Helena wanted in on the project so we got her some safety glasses and we were all ready to work. The first boards were cut for each shelf at 56 and 5 8 inches from long point to long point. The reclaimed wood we're using for this project are old 1x6 fir boards that were weathered for about 20 years outside, but this would also be a great project to build out of pallet boards if you have a couple pallets laying around or just normal 1x6 boards. We measured for the next board in by transferring the short points on each side of the previous cut board to where the long points will be cut on each of the next boards. Britt continued making cuts on the miter saw for each of the smaller boards, and we'd lay out each board and then line them up to see how everything kind of looked together. It was a lot of fun to pick out each board that we'd use, and then it was neat to see all the cool knots and character in the reclaimed wood. Then I ripped the front trim board down to size on the table saw. I had originally cut this front board at one and a half inches in width for the lower shelf, but I did end up replacing it toward the end of the project with a much wider trim piece, just since I liked the thicker look a little bit better. The rest of the frame for the lower shelf was made out of one and a half inch wide pine boards that I ripped down from scraps I had in the shop. The pine boards and the front trim board were laid out around the perimeter of the underside of the shelf. I then measured and cut the angles on the miter saw. Next, I cut a couple short pieces to provide extra support to the frame and another spot to nail the top boards to once assembled. Then we put together the frame using a combination of wood glue and 18 gauge finish nails. It went together real quickly and it's plenty strong. The front trim piece was then attached using wood glue and finish nails. Now this is the board I ended up deciding to make wider in a later step. So if you want to use a board that's a little wider for a more bold look or to help hide wires, now would be a good time to add it. Next, we began attaching the reclaimed boards to the frame to start forming the shelf surface. We used wood glue and two inch long 18 gauge nails to secure each board. Another idea I think would look nice depending on the look you're going for are using cedar pickets for the shelf boards. Now I used cedar pickets on this coffee table and then on this barn door project a few years ago and was really happy with the look. I'll link to each of those videos in the description below in case you want to check them out. Simply line up each remaining board and continue until the shelf top is complete. That basically completes the assembly of the first shelf and of course feel free to modify it to best fit your space. We then moved on to the upper shelf. This is assembled similar to how we did the lower shelf. The main differences are the frame uses three and a half inch wide boards and then a drawer is added. We started by measuring and cutting the front trim piece to size. Next, three and a half inch wide boards were used to form the frame for the shelf and they were test fit and then cut to size. The next step was to figure out the best size for the drawer. 
I had a drawer similar in size from my floating desk project, which I did last year and we'll link to in the description below. So I decided to test it out to see how it looked. I determined I could make the drawer a bit larger than that one and that the outside dimensions of the drawer for this project could be 17 inches in width by 16 inches in depth if I had an 18 inch wide opening. We began assembling the frame and you'll want to use a carpenter's square to make sure the frame gets lined up correctly. The two sides of the triangle will have 45 degree angles and then the top side will be a 90 degree angle. The big thing to make sure of is that the opening is the same width at the front and rear of the drawer area so the drawer will slide correctly. Double check that all the angles are squared up. And then I did shoot a couple nails a bit wide and so I quickly fixed that by removing them with an angle grinder. The front trim pieces were matched up and cut flush with the drawer opening, then attached with wood glue and 18 gauge nails. I used 14 inch drawer slides for this project and they were really easy to install. The right slide should be mounted with the wheel toward the front and in 1 16th of an inch from the front face board. I then rested the hardware flush with the bottom of the frame and then attached it with the short screws included with the hardware. Do this on both sides of the frame and drill pilot holes to help get those screws lined up perfectly. The drawer opening should be one inch wider than your outside dimensions of the drawer's width so that it will fit correctly with the slide hardware. Check again that the opening is still even from front to back and then attach the reclaimed boards to form the shelf. Simply attach the reclaimed boards using wood glue and nails just like the first shelf. I went back out to the wood pile to see what I could find to build the drawer out of, and I found an old 1x6 hickory board in the pile that would work perfect. I milled the board down in width to 2 inches and then to a half inch in thickness. Next the boards were cut down in length to form the four sides of the drawer box, and then sanded, and I decided to keep the weathered side of the board to the outside of the drawer to match the reclaimed look of the rest of the project. We'll attach the boards at each corner using wood glue and a couple one and a half inch long 18 gauge nails. Now I will say that this is about the most basic way to build a drawer and it works well for smaller type projects like this one. But if you're doing bigger drawers or just want to use some fancier techniques like dovetails, rabbit joints, or dowels, by all means go for it. The bottom of the drawer is made out of quarter inch thick plywood and then it's glued and nailed from the bottom side around the perimeter. The next step is to attach the remaining hardware to the drawer. The wheel will go towards the back and then the front of the hardware should be lined up flush with the front of the drawer. Go ahead and test the drawer to see that it will go in correctly and slide smoothly. I then lined up the board onto the drawer so the gaps on the left and right side were even. I tacked the board onto the drawer to temporarily hold it in place. I then opened it and then used screws to permanently connect the drawer front from the rear side. I used an inch hole saw on the top shelf and then an inch and a half hole saw on the lower shelf since more cables are going to be run through it. We did a quick sanding with 220 grit sandpaper to prepare it for a finish. Now here's a look at a clear oil-based sealer and then a water-based sealer. The water-based sealer on your right keeps the wood more of its natural colors, so we went with that instead of the oil-based stain which really darkens it. We sanded it just enough to bring out a few more brown tones from the wood and to make sure nobody was going to get slivers when they run their hand across it. And then we used an air compressor to quick remove some of the dust before sealing it. We brushed on the first coat of water-based polyurethane and a few things I really like about the water-based finish are that it dries super fast, it doesn't smell, and it keeps more of a natural look to the reclaimed wood. We let it dry overnight and then came back to do a light sanding by hand with some 800 grit sandpaper. The wood has a nice smooth finish. We then wiped away any dust and applied a second coat of the sealer. 
The sealer does go on with kind of a milky white look, but once it dries, it will be completely clear and it has a nice durable finish. I measured to find the center of the drawer front so I could add a handle to it. I marked where each hole needed to go, pre-drilled, and then inserted the screws from the back side to line up with and attach that handle. In order to be able to center the TV perfectly from the corner of the room over the entertainment center, I built a bracket out of a 2x10 board that will bring the 60 inch TV far enough out so it won't bump into the walls. I then attached this to the studs in the wall and bolted the metal mounting bracket to it. Before mounting the shelves, I found and marked the studs in the wall, and I like to use the Stud Buddy Magnetic Stud Finder, which has a magnet in it so you can easily find where the screws attach the drywall to the studs, and that way there's no guessing where the studs are. Britt helped hold the shelf in place while I pre-drilled and then attached the shelf to the wall by inserting 3 inch long wood screws through the shelf frame and into the studs. We measured up to determine the height to hang the upper shelf, then leveled it and attached it using wood screws. We installed the drawer, but decided the hardware might look a bit better in a dark bronze color instead of the nickel finish, so Britt gave it a quick spray with the rattle can. I started hooking the electronics back up and ran all the speaker wires. The one thing about open shelves is that you need to spend a little extra time running the wires and with the cable management to help hide everything. We decided to make one more modification since we could still see the wall plate with all the speaker and HDMI ports, so we decided to bring the front face of the lower shelf down a few inches to hide it. Since the original board was glued on, I decided not to pry it off and to simply attach a new three and a half inch wide board underneath the existing one and a half inch board. So if you do decide to do a wider front board from the start, which I'd recommend, uh, just use one that is around five inches in width or whatever you like the look of best. And that's all there was to it. We did a quick coat of sealer on the new board and called it a day. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click that bell below for notifications on when the next videos come out. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and cheers from Montana.